Here we are. I'll be presenting the case of orthosynthetic paresis. Aslan, why are you shy? Good morning, everyone. I will be presenting a case of orthosynthetic paresis. So, why we were at the clinic? Um, a sexy rule smart boy presents to us complaining of uh, left. Uh, left dropping of the upper eye uh, for about uh, two years duration and this history was positive for a recurrent left-sided neck masses for which uh, two surgeries were uh, done at the age of one and four years um, he had a negative family history uh, and he had no history of headache uh, neck pain or arm pain but an interesting history of improvement of lithosis on applying topical uh, cyclosporine uh, drops uh, his examination uh, he had a that's correct, the visual acuity of uh, 1 in the right eye and 0.8 in the left eye. And the marginal reflex distance was uh, plus 4 uh, in the right, plus uh, 1 or 0 in the left. Uh, left inverse stosis. Um, he also had an apparent anophthalmus and an isochoria with left uh, myotic pupil. The anisocoria increased in dim light uh, with a left dilation lag. He had intextile spinal severe reflexes and uh, a scar on the left side of the neck. Uh, there are, these are some old photos of the, of the boy where we couldn't notice any ptosis. So uh, what about the patient documents? We will uh, postpone this part uh, for later on in the presentation. Uh, so our, our clinical conclusion was that he is a condition of acquired diatrogenic osteoganglionic coronal syndrome. Uh, evidenced by the presence of uh, demyosis and total diphosis and the apparent anophthalmus, with the uh, absence of facial flushing and anhydrosis, sparing the uh, pseudomotor and the vasomotor fibers, and the intact spinal ciliary reflex. And uh, the decision was that uh, we should do a, a left levator tucking via conjunctival neurectomy, according to the penile FPN test, while completing the workup uh, and the patient reserves. And on the day of the surgery, we applied uh, a diluted uh, penilephrine, and this was the result. And the was completely resolved. So uh, we went uh, one time and proceeded to doing a Muller's muscle a conjunctiva dissection of eight millimeters with a carotid dissection. And this was the result in the post operatively. And now that the tosis has been corrected, we can clearly see the uh, Anisocoria and the left myotic pupil. So, what is Horner's? Horner's is a constellation of the classic triad of doses, myosis, and anhydrosis. Um, it results from uh, lesions to the sympathetic uh, pathway uh, to the head and neck, uh, and, as all, and as we all know, this uh, pathway uh, involves uh, three neurons. It's a three neuron pathway, so the causes uh, varies according to the age of the patient and the site of the lesion. Um, and once we uh, notice or uh, observe a Horner's, uh, prompt evaluation should be uh, initiated uh, to detect any life-threatening uh, condition. Uh, the uh, incidence of Horner's in the pediatric age group um, was estimated to be 1.42 uh, per 100,000 uh, patients younger than the age of 90. And the birth prevalence is 1 uh, in 6,250 for those uh, with a congenital onset. So, um, as we said, the etiology varies with the age of the patient at, uh, and the site of the lesion. So, if we suspect a central lesion, uh, it could be at the brainstem or the spinal cord. Um, uh, if we suspect a brachyanglionic lesion, it could be at the lung apex or at the neck. And if we suspect uh, post ganglionic lesion, it could be uh, an internal carotid artery dissection or uh, an, a lesion in the middle ear or in the cavernous sinus or in the or even in the orbit. Uh, but in um, 35 to 40 percent of cases, uh, the, the etiology remains unknown. In children, trauma is the most common cause. Other causes include uh, neuroplastoma and uh, carotid artery thrombosis. Uh, so, um, any acquired Horner's syndrome in childhood should be investigated for a neuroplastoma. Um, the diagnosis of Horner's is actually a clinical one, and we, we, we don't actually need a 
to perform any pharmacological uh, confirmation tests, but we can resort to them in certain cases. Um, the pharmacological tests uh, are the uh, cocaine and abraxanidine, which uh, can confirm the diagnosis of closure. Uh, and hydroxyamphetamine tests to uh, level this uh, deletion. Regarding the management, um, the, the first step is always to uh, potentiate uh, or perform the appropriate studies to identify the cause. And we should keep in mind that any acute onset of uh, painful Horner is a neurological emergency. And, this, uh, and the patient should be evaluated for a section of the internal carotid artery as these patients um, have an increased risk of a cerebral infarct. Um, imaging is often indicated in newly onset Horners unless there is a, an obvious cause such as a trauma or a surgical manipulation. And uh, once again, uh, any acquired boners in childhood should be investigated uh, for an neuroblastoma, especially if we have an acquired boners without an obvious case, uh, an, uh, an obvious cause uh, such as uh, trauma. Um, the investigations, once again, should be directed by the likely cause and the level of the lesion. So if, the, if we suspect a central lesion, we can do an MRI brain or, uh, or spinal cord. If it's a ganglionic lesion that we suspect, we can do a chest X-ray or even the Doppler MRI head and neck, and lymph node biopsy. If we suspect a postganglionic lesion, uh, we, we, we can do an MRI a head and neck, MRI orbits, DNT assessment as well. Regarding the treatment of Horner, uh, it actually depends on the etiology and it uh, usually uh, needs uh, referrals to other subspecialties so that we can liaise together. Uh, in some cases uh, associated with uh, some causes, uh, we can have a total recovery within a few hours, such as in cluster headaches, but in others, uh, it can be relentless and irreversible, um, such as when we have an, an invasive tumor. Uh, so, so how to treat it? Uh, once we do the appropriate uh, referrals and uh, investigations, and once we exclude life-threatening conditions, uh, we can um, treat any visually symptomatic reparatosis. Uh, and as in Horner's, uh, we have a good levator function. We can do an aponeurotic advancement or a monos muscle uh, conjunctival resection as we did uh, to our, our kid. So back to our kid. Uh, his documents revealed uh, the following. In, uh, in 2017, at the age of one year, um, at the first presentation uh, of the neck masses, uh, his CT was um, wasn't conclusive. He, they, they couldn't uh, even exclude a uh, Hodgkin's disease. Um, his biopsy uh, revealed the reactive follicular hyperplasia in the 2020 uh, at the age of four years when he had a recurrent neck mass. Uh, his ultrasound uh, showed a picture of uh, lymphangioma, and his MRI uh, confirmed the diagnosis of cystic glioma or lymphangioma and the pathology. So the predominant lymphangioma associated with the active follicular hyperplasia. In 2021, his labs showed a consistently elevated ESR and thrombocytosis. He had Epstein Barr virus immunoglobulins, uh, positive results in September of the, uh, of the year, and they turned out negative of, uh, in November of the same year. Um, his cytomegalovirus uh, immunoglobulin G was uh, positive, but his immunoglobulin negative, uh, uh, immunoglobulin M was negative in December of the same year. In 2022, he had a neck ultrasound which showed bilateral, not just on the left side, but bilateral enlargement of the cervical lymph nodes. And he had a consistently elevated ESR and thrombocytosis. Just still a few days, he had still had an elevated ESR and thrombocytosis, and I still don't know why. His neck ultrasound showed a bilateral lymphocytic cervical lymphadenopathy. And his pelvic abdominal ultrasound was unremarkable. He hadn't, he ha it didn't show any enlargement of the mesenteric or the paraortic lymph nodes. Uh, the boy was seen by a neurologist, a neurology professor who confirmed the diagnosis of uh, postganglionic corners. And he will still be undergoing um, an MRI with contrast, uh, hopefully uh, next week. And and then we will decide if he will need to uh, undergo a biopsy with a good lab evaluation. Uh, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Karim Bakr, 
um, as this work was a work conducted uh, under the supervision. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Peter. I have two questions uh, for your original comments on the case. Yeah, it's very infrequent in national encounter cases of uh, pediatric coronaries. The examiner of the day, I hope that when I even told this, what made you suspect in the whole world? Okay, like, in, did you notice an anisocoria? I was not there yet, that's all right. Okay, but do you have any comments? هو الحقيقة كنت أحب إن أنت تورينا صورة الأناتومي بتاع السيمباتيك تشين من أول برين عشان زمايلك يعرفوا يعني إيه سنترال ليجنز يعني إيه بري جانجليونيك فايبرز مكانها فين والبوست جانجليونيك والاحتمالات بتاعة الليجنز تمام فده برضه مهم لأن هي بتلف من عند الأبيكس أوف ذا لانج وترجع تاني في الماك فكنت أحب طبعا إن أنت توريني الصورة دي الحاجة الثانية زي ما احنا شايفين انت عالجت التوزس لكن لو زي ما انت شايف هو عنده مايلد اند بيوكي مش كده؟ الفيجوال اكيوتي 1 في عين و 0.8 في اللفت اي فطبعا دي شود بي كونسيدرد هو الايج بتاعه كان 6 ييرز 6 ييرز والليجن ابتدت بس التوزس زي ما الصور باينة ما ابتداش ايرلي تمام؟ بعد السكن يبقى اذا ممكن يكون الايتيولوجي هنا للهولنس مش برايمري ده سكندري للسيرجيكال انترفنشن. تمام. ايتروجينيك مش كده؟ الحاله الثانيه دي الليجنز دي احنا قلنا ان هي فاسكولر بس الليف نوتس يعني ليه الليف نوت بيوبسي كده؟ هم الحاجه الان مش عارفين يطلعوا حاجه انت اول خالص قالوا بصرا لفانجيوما كده في الورق القديم قوي دلوقتي شويه اكتر ان هي اكتر ليف فانجيوماسي قال بقى فايرال ليف فانجيوماسي يحاولوا يعرفوا ايه نوع الفايرال بالظبط يعني ان ريليتد للتيوم هو السكار ده كان عشان يشيلوا الماس في الاول بالظبط اول خالص شالوها في الاول شالوها خالص وقالوا قالوا ليه ليف فانجيوما وبعد كده لما رجع تاني دخلوا 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 مره ثانيه حصل بعد كده التوز بعد بعد ثاني مره وساعتها بقى قالوا ان هي غالبا الليمفيدينوبسي مش ليمفي جيوما فقالوا بقى القصه ان هو يدوروا بقى ايه سبب الليمفيدينوبسي دوت ولغايه دلوقتي هو طبعا بيتر عامل شغل معاهم كويس قوي وتواصل مع النيورولوجيست وتواصل مع الاطفال تمام وحتى اللي كلمني قال لي انا شايف عندي حاله شكلها توز شايف فيها توز شايف فيها شكل كده هورنر شايف فيها توز وبيوز يعني طبعا كبير بيروح ليه يعني بس راح هي الفكره بتاعت ان هم حتى لسه مش عارفين ايه المشكله ايه المشكله دي في دوت بس خايفين بقى يخشوا مره ثانيه احنا خلاص يعني اللاك ماس دي اتحللت باثولوجي؟ اتحللت مره في الاول مره مره في الاول قالوا في الاول خالص قالوا حتى زمان السيستيك هجروما مره كانوا كاتبين كده اه يعني بس انا شايفه ديفرنت دايجنوزيز ده احنا جبنا الورق كله القديم بتاعها كله حتى قصر الام اصلا زهقت اصلا من القصه دي خلاص يعني دي الورق دي بتاعها كله هو في الاخر المنظر عامل ايه شكلها حاجه ليفادينوس ولا لا سيستيك هجروما ولا ولا ليفانجيو هو الحقيقه احنا وي شود تيك كير قوي لاي ليجن غريب كده في الاطفال يعني ريسنتلي كان عندي طفل عنده ماس كده جنب الكرامب صغيره قوي كده وشكلها فيها زي انتري اريا كده وبقى جالي بعد اسبوعين من التريتمنت نو امبروفمنت تمام وخدت توبيكال ستيرويدز كل حاجه انا شكيت قلت يمكن في فورن بودي صغير وعامل الماس دي عليه شلتها قررت ان انا طالما ان هي ديد نوت امبروف وطلعت ليمفوما اه اتس فيري سترينج يعني ان ا هيلثي تشايلد ما فيش اي هيستوري فطبعا بعته بقى للناس بتوع الكانسر وكده عشان تو انفستيجيت فاحنا فعلا يعني الحاجات دي شود بي تيكن انت كونسيدريشن ان ات ماي بي سمثينج مالجنت ريكرنت حاجات الابشتاين بابا فايروس طالع بوزيتيف هل ممكن اه بس ده ممكن اللي يعمل ليمفادينوباثي تو ذا اكستنت ان هي تبقى ابشتاين بابا يعني هو سيجمنتيشن ريت عالي لكن ما فيش الفيفر ما فيش المالتيبل ليمفادينوباثي فيعني يعني ممكن يكون بعدين ابشتاين بابا انت عندك اي جي جي واي جي ام في السيتوميجال تمام فانت اللي عندك ايه اللي عادي الاي جي جي مش كده يعني اثنين اندكيت حاجه بريفيوس انفكشن لو اج جي عالي بنعمله سيريالي لو الاج جي بيزيد يبقى دي حاجه ريسنت مش لازم الاي جي ام لكن لو هي ستيبل يبقى دي حاجه يعني بريفيوس انفكشن وخلاص سيتل يعني شكرا يلا